I think actually that was an old title that was <laughs> put there since we had to send the title several times at the end, I think at the end one, the long, wrong one, and up there. So actually, uh, I have this title, which is a bit uh, simpler, and also the talk will be also more introductory. So uh, what I want to talk about is, well, the BV and the BFV formulas. The BV stands for Batalin Bilkovsky, BFV for Batalin Fracti Bilkovsky. And in particular, I want to talk about the combination of the two, which is uh, an ongoing project that's been going on for several years now, together with Kolya and with uh, Pavel Nyov, who unfortunately is stuck in the US waiting for his green card. Otherwise, he would have been here as well. And there are other well, now students start to uh, be attached to this project. I've just mentioned a few of them. OK, so here is just, uh, ambitious move here. Here is just uh, the plan of the talk. But let me move on just uh, to do the stuff. So basically, what we want to do maybe first uh, is to, since, well, there, I think there is no, no, not many experts here, I will first give a very, very short overview of super manifold, actually called a graded manifold. So it means uh, in, uh, in addition to odd and even variable, there is an additional uh, grading over integers. And in particular, uh, what is needed for all this construction is a notion of symplectic structure on graded manifolds and notion of a differential on graded manifolds and the compatibility between them. And depending on the degrees, these will be give us several structure. For example, BV, Batalin Wilkowski, or BFV, Batalin Frack Wilkowski, but also other structuring. So you put an extra N here to keep track of the extra possible grade you can put. So another example we'll describe is that of Poisson manifolds. And then I will move on to relaxed structure, where some of the actions are uh, not, no longer there. So for example, the compatibility between the differential and symplectic structure is, is uh, relaxed a bit. And I will show how this produces some uh, uh, additional structure, actually. And in particular, I will dis uh, uh, discuss how this is related to uh, quantum field theory. OK, so let me just shortly tell you what is a graded manifold. So, so a, manifold, a graded manifold is like a manifold, but locally, in addition to the usual even coordinates, we allow also odd local coordinates. So that means that locally, uh, you take functions that are the tensor product of usual C infinity functions on some open subsets of Rn, tensor some exterior algebra. That's the only, the only thing. And then, of course, things have to, to, uh, uh, have to be glued nicely together from patch to patch. So you can formulate this in different ways. Just say that uh, you have a sheaf of algebras that locally are of these forms. Or more concretely, you can give transition functions from one chart to the other. That has to be just morphism of these uh, graded commutative algebras. Uh, notice that, uh, in addition, just to, to be, be precise, the odd coordinates anti-commute with themselves. So they generate this uh, exterior algebra, but they commute with the even coordinates. So they are just a module of uh, the, the, the algebra of even coordinates. So yes, and in addition, I, I want to, just for bookkeeping, it's good to have a Z grading in addition. Uh, this in physics corresponds to Gauss number. So the idea is that uh, degree grading equal to zero uh, describe the physical part of your theory. And the additional grading is something you add for other purposes, as I will describe. In principle, the Z grading and the, the Z2 grading can be completely independent. I mean, you need some relation that tells you what are the signs. But uh, in principle, they're pretty independent. But for simplicity in this talk, I will assume that the parity that is the Z2 grading, so the grading responsible for the commutativity of the, the, the graded commutativity of the algebra, is just the same as the Z grading modulo 2. Okay, this is just this is simplification, uh, which actually, for example, in physics uh, is okay for all uh, field theories that do not contain physical fermions. So physical fermions are an example of physical fields, so Gauss number zero, so the, the grading should be zero, but that are odd. So they are not part of these descriptions. I mean, they can be included, but for simplicity, I will not do it. So uh, later on, I will only speak of the Z grading, and you should remember that the parity is just a reduction modulo two. 
Okay, uh, so the next uh, remark is that if you have a graded manifold locally, you have these algebras, but also globally, uh, you have an algebra. So the, uh, the whole, the, 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 the SHIFO section of the whole, uh, sorry, yeah, the, the, yeah, global sections also form a graded commutative algebra. So I will use this symbol, C infinity of M. This means uh, uh, the graded commutative algebra associated to the graded manifold. So it, remember, it is not the usual C infinity because it also contains this uh, exterior algebra in addition. Now let me move to examples so this will become clear. So we'll give some global examples. So the simplest example is the odd tangent bundle. So I take a, an ordinary manifold N, I take its tangent bundle, and I shift it by one. So by this, I mean that by decree, I said that the fiber coordinates have degree one, and therefore by this convention they are odd. So if you go back to the local picture, we have some coordinates qi on n of degree zero. They generate the, the algebra of functions of, on an open subset of our n. And in addition, we have some fiber coordinates that I denote by vi. To remember, it's a tangent bundle, so these are like velocities. But I sum to them degree plus one. Okay. So if you think a moment, uh, it means that uh, locally we have function tensor the exterior algebra generated by this vi. But you might think of this vi algebraically as the same thing as the dxi, the differential of the coordinates. So this means that uh, the graded commutative algebra associated to this supermanifold is nothing else than the usual uh, algebra of differential forms on the base n. Okay? So this is a very simple example, but it's also very important. OK. On graded manifold, we can introduce uh, a lot of structure. Uh, the first piece of structure I want to introduce is a notion of cohomological vector field. This is uh, following Weintraub's terminology. And uh, in the talk, I will shortly call it CVF. So a cohomological vector field is nothing else than a differential on, on this graded algebra. So a differential on symphony man, so by this I mean a, an opera a linear operator on this algebra uh, of degree plus one that squares to zero, and it is also a graded derivation. Okay? <coughs> so the terminologies come from the fact that derivation on the algebra function of smooth manifold are the same things as vector fields. So we extend this terminology also super manifold. So uh, a derivation on symphony man, it will, by definition, by decree, the same as a vector field on the manifold. So we'll call this vector field usually with the letter capital Q. And uh, saying that it is a differential means that its degree is one, and that, well, it's a squares to zero as an operator of the algebra function, but as a vector field, it means that its Lie bracket with itself is zero. And this is a non-trivial relation because Q is odd. So like, going back to our previous example of the odd tangent bundle, there we have a canonical a cohomological vector field, which is just the Ram differential. So, right? The different differential is a differential on the algebra function of, in, in this case, which is the algebra of differential forms. And you can also write it down in local coordinates by this expression. Remember that the QI are the coordinates on the base, on the ordinary manifolds N, and the VI are the coordinate on, on the uh, tangent fiber. Another example that I will use a lot is uh, that of uh, a Lie algebra. So start with a, a Lie algebra G and shift it by one. So again, this means that you, for example, you pick a basis and you declare basis element to be odd and of degree one. So in particular, uh, this means that the algebra of function is nothing else than the exterior algebra of the dual of the Lie algebra. And also here you have a, a natural differential, which is just a chevalet eilenberg differential. Okay, so this is another example of cohomological vector field. Again, you can write down, you can write it down in local coordinates. So pick a basis, ci, denote by fijk the structure constants in that basis, and then q as this expression. So notice that now it's a quadratic vector field. Okay, in physics, this is called the BRST operator. The next and actually last piece of uh, uh, ingredient I want to introduce is the notion of graded symplectic form. So formally, this is the same as symplectic form or under the manifolds, but you have to keep track with degree. So a graded symplectic form omega of degree n is nothing else than a closed non-degenerate two form with internal degree equal to n. So notice now we have two degree. We have the form degree, but also uh, the z-grading of, of the supermanifold. 
Okay, uh, closed uh, means that uh, actually, well, you can define differential forms on super manifolds. You can define uh, the, 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 the the RAM uh, the differential just purely algebraically. So everything uh, works the same way. And non-degeneracy is also not a problem because a two-form, also in the case of super manifolds, uh, establishes um, a linear map between a tangent and cotangent bundle. You just require this linear map to be an isomorphism, and this is a non-degeneracy condition. But maybe let me give you an example to, to see that how it works. So now the, in the canonical example now is the odd cotangent bundle. So take the, uh, an ordinary manifold N, take its cotangent bundle, and shift uh, the fiber coordinate by one. So here, the base coordinate will still be denoted by QI, and they are even, so they generate uh, the usual algebra functions and open subsets of Rn. And the fiber coordinate that I denote by PI, to remember there are momenta, like in, in mechanics, now have the grip plus one, and they are odd. So if you think a moment, well, what it means that uh, global function are section of the exterior algebra of the tangent bundle. So this is what you usually call uh, multi-vector fields. So I will use this notation for multi-vector fields. Now, if you use these uh, local coordinates, you can write down the usual formula for the canonical symplectic structure of a cotangent bundle, sum over dpi dqi. But uh, this is clearly closed. It's even exact. Uh, it's clearly non-degenerate. But now, since p has degree 1, this has internal degree plus 1. So this is an example of a symplectic form of degree plus 1. Uh, a symplectic form induces a Poisson bracket. Uh, uh, so uh, basically, what you, when once you have the, this non-degenerate to form to every function you can associate is a corresponding Hamiltonian vector field. So this is a unique vector field whose contraction with the symplectic form is a differential of a function. And then uh, you can define the Poisson bracket between two functions just by applying the Hamiltonian vector field of one function to the other function. And in this example, uh, the Poisson bracket turns out to be the same as the house and nine noise bracket on multivector fields. This example can be generalized to different shifts. So instead of shifting by one, you can shift by n. Uh, the algebra function will be depending on the parity of n, again, uh, multivector fields or symmetric tensors, but uh, with uh, uh, different degrees. But still, you can write down uh, this Poisson structure. Now we'll have degree n, and the Poisson bracket, depending on the degree, will be the scouting nine noise bracket with some shift in the degrees, or the corresponding bracket, uh, or essentially, yeah, the usual Poisson bracket on polynomial uh, function of a cotangent bundle. OK, now we have these two. Uh, ingredients, uh, uh, the differential and symplectic structure, and I want to put them together uh, in the natural way. So uh, the natural way just to say that uh, uh, the symplectic structure is invariant under the vector field. Okay? So in this case, I would speak of a differential graded symplectic structure of the degree n. So not is a degree, is only the degree of, of omega. Q is fixed of degree 1. So to be more explicit, omega is a graded symplectic form of degree n. Q is a, a, a cohomological vector field. And in addition, I want it to be symplectic. So this means that the lead derivative of omega with respect to Q must be 0. Okay. Now, it's often useful to have a stronger condition than this one, namely that Q should be Hamiltonian. So by this, I mean that there is a, a function S, necessarily of degree n plus 1, such that the contraction of uh, omega with Q is a differential of this function. And now, uh, uh, this condition, the condition that, not is that now this condition is automatically implied. When I take the differential of this expression, I get the lead derivative, and this has to be 0. But this condition, the fact that Q commutes with itself, now translates into the condition that this function S Poisson commutes with itself. This is called the classical master equation. Now, uh, restricting to uh, uh, the Hamiltonian case is uh, uh, actually a mild condition. Uh, namely, actually, uh, Reutenberg observed once, uh, unless you are in the case when n is equal to minus 1, uh, a symplectic vector field is always Hamiltonian. And the reason is that you have an explicit formula to write down the Hamiltonian. So namely, uh, you have your Q. 
and there is another uh, canonical vector field you have on, 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 on every graded manifold, so so-called graded Euler vector field. So this is a vector field that essentially uh, gives back the, the degree of function. So an homogeneous function is defined this way. So if f is a function of degree f, e applied to f just multiplies the function f by its degree. And you can immediately check that this is a derivation, so it defines a vector field. Okay. So you have this extra uh, even vector field at your disposal. So what you can do, you can take your symplectic form omega, contract it with uh, the cohomological vector field Q, and contract it again with this vector field E, and then you get a function. And then you can check that if you take the differential of, of, um, of, of this function uh, up to a factor n plus 1, you get uh, just a contraction of Q with omega. So this allows you to define this Hamiltonian function S. And of course, this formula doesn't work in the case n equal to minus 1. So this is the only exception. And let me remark that the case n equal to minus 1 is important. It's the case of BV. But I will go back to that uh, later. OK, now let me give you uh, a couple of examples of uh, uh, differential grade symplectic structure. So one is our canonical example of symplectic structure, namely cotangent bundle shifted by one, right, where n is an ordinary manifold. Uh, so uh, remember that uh, functions over the supermanifold are the same things as multivector fields. Now, if we are, since we are in the Hamiltonian case, we have to look for uh, a function of degree plus two that Poisson commutes with itself. So a function of the supermanifold is the same as a multivector field. A function of degree 2 is the same as a bivector field. And the condition that it Poisson commutes with itself just means that this, the, the, the Schouten line noise bracket of this uh, bivector field with itself is 0. So this is the same condition as the one that defines a Poisson bivector field on the manifold. So this means that having uh, a differential grade symplectic structure on this cotangent bundle is the same as having a post an ordinary Poisson structure on the base n. Uh, once we have this S, you can compute the corresponding cohomological vector field Q, and you can check that this is a so-called poisson nerovich differential appearing in Poisson geometry. I mean, if you don't know that, I will, well, I will not use it. Just to, this is just a remark for people in Poisson geometry. The other example is the case of Lie algebra. Again, take a Lie algebra shifted by 1. Remember that uh, functions here are the exterior algebra of G-dual. We have a canonical differential there, which is uh, the chevalier allenberg differential. So what we need now is a compatible uh, symplectic form. So I'm looking for a symplectic form of degree 2 here. So if you think a moment, this means that uh, uh, so a form of degree 2 is the same as a, a, a pairing on G. So I want uh, uh, the form to be non-degenerate. So this means it's just a non-degenerate pairing. So a non-degenerate, uh, so, uh, so a, sim a constant symplectic form on the supermanifold is the same as a non-degenerate symmetric uh, by, by, by linear pairing for G. Okay. Now, I want the symplectic form to be compatible with uh, the cohomological vector field. And if you think a moment, this just means that uh, uh, since the, 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 the cohomological vector field is a chevalier allenberg differential, this just means that this uh, bilinear form should be bi-invariant under the, the joint action of the algebra on itself. OK, so, so, so in this example, a differential gradient symplectic structure is just the same as giving uh, a non-degenerate invariant by linear pairing on your Lie algebra. You can write down things also in coordinates. So, uh, um, so remember that in code I denoted by, uh, the structure constant by Fijk with one lower index. And now I, I have this invariant metric. I use it to raise the index. So I have this new uh, structure constant with the upper indices. These are just the usual structure constants with one index raised by the metric. And uh, the, 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 the function s uh, can be written this way. Okay. So now it, uh, it has a degree plus 3. And these are uh, examples, for example, very important for Chen Simon theory. OK, now let me uh, give you examples uh, uh, depending on, on the degree of, of, of the symplectic form. So the case n equal to minus 1, so the case when the symplectic form has degree minus 1, is the original case studied by Batalink and Wilkowski. So uh, this is a setting that is used to do uh, 
gauge fixing in quantum field theory. I will just tell you a bit about at it later. So also notice that this is the only case where the Hamiltonian function is not guaranteed to exist. So usually you assume it uh, to exist as a separate assumption. The next important case is the case n equal zero. So this extends the case of ordinary symplectic manifold by adding some odd coordinates. And this is a setting for the batalin fratkin vilkovsky And I will explain later, uh, this setting is the one that allows you to give a cohomological resolution for symplectic reduction. And finally, the last case I want to talk about is the case n equal to one. So we saw an example, right? The cotangent bundle shifted by one, and we saw that this was exactly the same as a Poisson structure on the base manifold n, right? So actually, this is the only example you have if uh, uh, your supermanifold is of this form. Cotangent bundle shifted by one of an ordinary manifold. Uh, if uh, you are not in, the, in this case, so for example, if you allow the base manifold to be itself uh, a graded manifold, uh, what happens is that essentially you get almost the same. So you get something that looks like a Poisson structure, but up to homotopy. So basically, uh, the Poisson bracket, instead of being just a, an ordinary bracket, will be part of an, an, an L infinity structure. So in addition to the, to the bracket, you will also have a differential, which is not a cohomological director field. You will have a bracket with three entries, a bracket with four entries, and so on. And uh, there are relations uh, between them. When you say more generally, does it mean that there are negative degrees? Yeah, for example, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, here, notice that in this example, you only have a coordinate of degree zero and coordinate of degree plus one, okay? So since this must be symplectic, if you add x coordinate of higher degree than one, then you necessarily will have also coordinate of degree minus one, okay? And oh, no negative in general, okay? So this is the generalization. Okay. Uh, by analogy with uh, the notation for BV and BFV, uh, I will call the general case of degree n a BFn plus 1v structure. So for n minus 1, you recover BV. For n equals 0, you recover BFV. And then you have the other cases. So for example, uh, the case of Poisson manifold or Poisson manifold up to homotopy is the same as BF square v in this notation. So this becomes a bit shorter. Is there some other there is, a, is there some other Fratkin involved? There is Fratkina was involved in one of the papers. Yes, but there are there two Fratkins somewhere? Uh, ah, no, no, I think so. <laughs> no. OK, um, so let me now describe the example of BFV. So this is degree 0. Okay, so this is an example of uh, symplectic reduction. And let me do it in the simplest possible example. So suppose we have a, a, an ordinary symplectic manifold N. So this is an ordinary manifold. Omega N is an ordinary symplectic form. And in addition, we have a sub-manifold C that is defined as a zero of a, uh, of, of a function phi at a regular value. So I assume that zero is a regular value. Okay, now, since C is all dimensional, the restriction of the symplectic form to C is necessarily degenerate. Uh, you can check that this kernel uh, local is one dimensional. And you can also check that it is generated by the Hamiltonian vector field x phi of the, fun of the constraint phi. So the reason is that if you contract the symplectic form with the Hamiltonian vector field of phi, you get the differential of phi, which by definition is zero on the submanifold. So this is clearly in the kernel, but since the kernel has a, a rank one, this is the whole kernel. Now, uh, in, in this instance, in what people are interested in is a so-called symplectic reduction. So namely, you take uh, uh, the uh, involutive distribution uh, spanned by this vector field, and you take the quotient, which I denote by C underlined. Now, for simplicity here, I assume that the quotient uh, is smooth. So, uh, so this is a smooth manifold. In addition, the symplectic form is automatically invariant and basic. So there is a unique uh, two form on the quotient whose pullback is a given symplectic form. And the two form on the quotient is automatically non-degenerate because we are modded out exactly by its kernel. So C underlying becomes a symplectic manifold. Now, I want now to give an algebraic description of this because eventually we want to drop the assumption that the quotient is smooth. So algebraically, the functions on this symplectic reduction are nothing else than uh, the function on C 
I mean, the, 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 the invariant function on, on C. So by this x phi, I mean a function invariant under the action of this vector field. Now, function on C are the same things as function on the whole manifold and modulo the ideal generated by the constraint. Okay, so, so here, uh, yeah. Now, equivalently, we can formulate this this way. So n of phi are, are the function on the whole manifold whose Poisson bracket with the constraints is a multiple of the constraint itself. Okay? So these are functions that are not exactly invariant, but they are invariant once you uh, restrict them to C. Now, now, if you think a moment, taking a function module of the ideal and then taking the invariant ones is exactly the same as taking functions that are invariant up to restricting them and then dividing by the ideal. Okay? So this uh, description, this algebra description is completely equivalent and this is the one I'm going to use. Okay, now how can you make this cohomological? Well, the trick is the following. Uh, take your uh, manifold, ordinary manifold N, and take its product with the cotangent bundle of R shifted by one. So notice here the shift is in R itself. So it's, I take R, but I declare its unique coordinate to be odd. Okay, and then you take the cotangent bundle of it with its canonical symplectic structure. So I will denote by C the coordinate on R, and C squares to zero just because right, it's odd. And then we have, and that's, and that's degree plus one. And in addition, there is a momentum for C, which I call B, right? And this has a, a degree minus one, because it's, it's a cotangent, and it's also odd, okay? And this is a canonical symplectic structure, the B, the C. So as a whole symplectic structure on the supermanifold, I take the sum of the two. So the symplectic structure of the ordinary manifold N plus this DB, DC. And now uh, we need uh, a function of degree one, so the only uh, natural candidate we have is a constraint phi times the coordinate c that has degree one, right? So this function automatically Poisson commutes with itself, right? Because there are no b's, so c commutes with itself. And on the other hand, uh, the first part is just a usual Poisson bracket, but since phi is an ordinary function, right, the, the, the Poisson bracket of phi with itself is zero, just by the skew commutativity of, of the Poisson bracket. You can also compute the cohomological vector field. It's a very simple exercise. So Q applied to the coordinate B is just a Poisson bracket of this function with the coordinate B. So you just kill the C and you get the phi. Whereas uh, Q applied to C is zero because this function does not depend on B. And the interesting part is Q applied to a function on the manifold N. Because here you have to take the Poisson bracket with C phi, you can extract C because F does not depend on either B, does not depend on B. But you still have the usual Poisson bracket between phi and F. So this is the whole Q, you can easily check that it squares to zero. So in particular, we can apply this Q to function of degree zero and minus one. So the most general function of degree zero is a linear combination of a function on N and uh, a multiple of C times B, okay? So if you use this rule, Q applied to this function gives these terms. Now you see that uh, function in degree zero that are killed by zero, Right, now you can split these two conditions. Uh, so actually, yeah, you can see this condition. This condition means that you have a function degree zero. This is the same as a pair of function f and g with a property that f bracket with a constraint is equal to the function g. And so notice this is exactly this condition. So uh, function of degree zero that are killed by q are exactly the same as the function we want to put here. Now, if you take function of degree minus one, the only thing are things that are proportional to B, you can compute these, and so you see that uh, the part that does not depend on, on C just generates phi, okay? And, well, and the rest is also compatible. Uh, so, but this means that function of degree zero that are exact under the action of Q are exactly uh, in correspondence with the GL generated by phi. So this means that the cohomology in degree zero is exactly the same as function on, on the reduced space. The next piece of observation is that this cohomological vector field Q is also symplectic, so it's given, right, as a uh, Poisson, I mean, is given from this function, so it's compatible with a Poisson bracket. So actually on this supermanifold we have a Poisson bracket and its cohomology inherits a Poisson bracket. And so you can actually check that this equality is not just an equality of, of algebras, but it is an equality of Poisson algebras. 
Okay? So this way we can reconstruct the symplectic reduction as a Poisson algebra. And now uh, the idea is that you can drop the condition that the quotient is smooth and just retain this algebraic uh, construction. Okay. You see, is it a function on base, on the base of added to, uh, to the one one dimensional main? So, so the, you, you cross with a manifold. Is it one one dimensional? This is one one, yeah. One, one. And, uh, which one? No, 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 this is not one one. This is uh, in, in the super manifold is zero two. It has two odd coordinates. Two. It has two odd coordinates, B and C. Do you care which one of B and C is a base and which one is a fiber? No, I don't, but I care for the degree. Just the degree. C is degree plus one and B is degree minus one. But that otherwise, no, it's, uh, there's no extra structure. Okay, so here the message that you can replace symplectic reduction by this uh, uh, algebraic procedure, and this algebraic procedure, well, works uh, everything. Of course, uh, you have uh, this equality only if the uh, reduction is smooth. Otherwise, you take this as a, your definition of, of reduction. Now you can generalize this to a more complicated submanifold. So for simplicity, let me assume that we have a symplectic manifold and that the submanifold is a common zero set of several functions. So again, uh, now I have a map from a symplectic manifold to r to the power r, and I assume that zero is a regular value for, for this map. So this is some manifold. And I assume that the Poisson bracket of the two constraints vanishes when it's restricted to C. So this is uh, what is uh, called a, a quasotropic submanifold. So true quasotropic submanifold are a bit more general. I mean, the, this condition is satisfied only locally, but uh, for this talk, I will uh, focus on, on this example where you have global constraints. Now again, you can uh, observe that uh, uh, the kernel of the restriction of the symplectic form to C is again generated by the Hamiltonian vector fields of the constraints. So uh, this means that you can give again an algebraic uh, description for uh, the quotient, and actually you can get to the batalin frack vitovsky description. So this actually had been introduced by batalin frack and Vitovsky, and later on explained by Stashev in its full generality. So the idea is to associate to your given symplectic manifold and submanifold some uh, greater symplectic manifold of degree zero in such a way that the cohomology in degree zero with respect to the cohomological vector field gives you back the Poisson algebra of function on the symplectic reduction in the smooth case. Otherwise, you just take the right hand side as a definition. And but in general. Mm -hmm. you just take the conormal bundle as your coordinate? If, well, if you don't have constraints, yes. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you don't have a global constraints, yes, you have to go to the odd conormal bundle, but then the construction becomes a bit more involved, but it can be done, yes. This was done by Florian Schatz students. So, uh, I mean, the, the only problem is you have to, well, to check how things glue together and so on. But I mean, it's not trivial, but it uh, can be done. Okay, so the trick is essentially the same thing we did before, but now since now we have R constraints, we take R to the R and shift it by one. But, so now we have R odd coordinates of degree one that I denote by C sub I, and there are momenta B upper I that are also odd and have degree minus one, and I just consider a canonical symplectic form. And then we need a function of degree one that Poisson commutes with itself and has the property of giving this the right cohomology. So the good candidate starts again with a linear combination of the constraints over the odd generators of R, so this piece here. And the, 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 the interesting lemma is that actually, you, now here I put some dots. I mean, this is not the final answer. This does not work in general. So what you have to do is to add a, a extra contribution that depends on the Bs. But uh, the, 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 the theorem is that uh, if you have regular constraints, so if zero is a regular value, you can always find uh, the extra contribution here in such a way that S Poisson commutes with itself and the cohomology in degree zero gives you back uh, functions on, on the reduction. Okay, so this is done by, uh, so in the, in the version as described by Stashev, this is done by uh, cohomological perturbation theory. Okay, so the, I mean, of course, the dots are not unique. Again, they also define up to, uh, well, trivial things in cohomology. Okay, so this is a general uh, construction. Uh, a very special case is that of an equivariant momentum map. Uh, so in this case, I assume that I can assemble the end constraints 
as a map to the dual of some of the algebra, and I assume that this map is equivariant. So I assume that, uh, that the algebra X on the uh, symplectic manifold N, and of course it acts on, on, on its dual by the cojon action, and I assume that this map uh, is equivariant. So this is a setting of uh, the marston weinstein reduction. So the Mars and Weiner reduction can be rephrased in this language, uh, in the BVFV setting, and uh, you have to compute the, 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 the function S. So the starting term is the, the linear combination of a constraint. And in this setting, you can show that there is a solution that stops here in the, uh, an extra term that is linear in the B coordinates. And the extra term is just the BRST term that I introduced before. So FIJK are the structure constant in a given basis. And, uh, and then we have just a term that is quadratic in the C coordinates and linear in the B coordinates. So this is a very simple answer. OK, now let me describe the last example, the case uh, uh, in degree minus 1. So here will be very, very quick because I cannot go into the details. So this is a batani vilkovsky formalism uh, that is used to describe the uh, gauge fixing in quantum field theory. So the main idea from batani vilkovsky but of course they've been expanded and, uh, in several directions by Witten, Albert Schwartz, uh, Huda Verdian, uh, Shevera, and so on. So let me give you the final geometrical answer uh, which is very, well, can be explained very compactly. So the first observation, so let's assume that F is a, a, a not a finite dimensional symplectic manifold. I mean, later on it will fix the degree to be minus one, but for a moment just take just odd. Doesn't matter what the, the actual degree is. And I have to assume that it is finite dimensional. So of course, you may say that, well, this does not apply to quantum field theory, but this will come later on. So let's assume it's odd and finite dimensional. So the first remark is that half then you can define half densities on such a super manifold. So these uh, are uh, locally are just functions, but when you move from one patch to the other, they have to transform with the Berezinian of the transformation. So the Berezinian is the super version of the determinant, if you know what it is. So, but anyway, you can define densities that way, and half densities are things that transform as a square root of the Berezinian. You, you can check that on a not symplectic manifold, uh, uh, the Berezinian. Uh, uh, well, the, the, the even part of the Berezinian is even, so you can take the square root, so you can define half densities. And you can also show that uh, uh, half densities restricted to Lagrangian submanifold define densities on the Lagrangian submanifold. So half densities are the natural thing that you can integrate on Lagrangian submanifolds. And the second thing you can show that uh, there is a canonical co-boundary operator capital delta defined on half densities. And then the two important theorem are this one. If you have a half density rho and uh, a Lagrangian sum manifold L, then the integral of delta rho on L is always zero, assuming that it, that it converges. And the second important theorem is that if you have a, a, a half density sigma that is killed by uh, the Cobandi operator delta, and you have a family of Lagrangian sum manifold L sub t, then the integral does not depend on uh, the element of your family. Okay, so, uh, so this is an important part for gauge fixing. So the idea is that one tries to rephrase quantum field theory for gauge theories by giving uh, um, a half density that is killed by this operator, and then the so-called gauge fixing for quantum field theory is the, the choice of a Lagrangian sum manifold, and this tells you that uh, you shouldn't care for which choice you make because this result is invariant under deformation, okay? So this is very similar to when, when, in algebraic topology, and you want to define the, the self-intersection number of a manifold with itself. This is, of course, ill-defined. Right? You have to take the Cartesian product and try to intersect the diagonal with itself. This doesn't make sense, but you deform the diagonal a little bit, and you will have only finitely many intersections, and you count them with signs, and you show that this does not depend on the deformation, so this becomes a good definition. This is an incomplete analogy. Okay, now this uh, description can be very dry, so let me give you an example, which is actually the canonical and unique example. Uh, so, uh, Again, delta, no, 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 because uh, uh, there is no algebra structure on half densities. I mean, the product of two half densities is a density. But you can multiply them by functions. Yeah, then I will come to that, yeah, yeah, I'll come in the next slide, yeah. But is it a differential operator? Not delta itself, but uh, delta on, on function will be. I mean, I have to tell you how to 
Yeah, yeah, I will come in a moment, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the main example, which is actually a unique example of the following. Now, M is an ordinary manifold. You take its cotangent bundle and you declare its fiber coordinate to be odd. So this capital pi means odd. So it could be, for example, the example when they uh, consider before shifted by plus one or by minus one. Now, in this, actually, you can show, this was proved by Albert Schwartz, that every odd sim smooth symplectic manifold is symplectomorphic to an odd cotangent bundle. I mean, not canonically, but uh, it's always symplectomorphic, not, not cotangent bundle. So this actually is actually the, the only example. And in the example, you can check that half densities on the super manifold are the same thing as differential forms on the base manifold. Okay, so up to this uh, non-canonical symplectomorphism. And the other thing you can check is the following. Suppose that C is a submanifold of the ordinary manifold M. Then uh, you can construct a Lagrangian submanifold of the odd cotangent bundle just by taking the odd conormal bundle of C. And now the result is that uh, if you take a, a half density rho and you want to integrate it on this Lagrangian submanifold, this is exactly the same thing as integrating the corresponding differential form rho on the submanifold C. And the last piece of information is that this uh, uh, canonical operator delta in this language becomes just the usual Deram differential. Okay? So here I'm just rephrasing Stokes theorem in a complicated way. So the reason to do that is that uh, there is a bit more in here. Namely, uh, this allows you to consider other Lagrangian submanifolds that are not uh, odd conormal bundle. I mean, you can start with the conor odd conormal bundle and deform it in, such a in the odd part in such a way that it's no longer an odd conormal bundle. So, so this uh, construction is, is a bit more general, and it also has some other practical advantages that uh, we'll see in a moment. Okay, and again, the idea for the gauge fixing is the following, that you start with the field theory, you have uh, some preferential uh, Lagrangian sum manifold, which the integral is ill-defined, and then you deform it a little bit in such a way that the integral converges. Uh, the result now does not depend on how you deform it, and you take that as a definition of a gauge fixed quantum field theory. Okay, now coming back to your question, it's of course uh, this delta doesn't have a extra algebraic structure because half densities do not form an algebra. Okay, the product of two half density is a density. So it's better to move on to, on to functions. So what you do is you fix some reference half density rho and I will assume that it's killed by delta and going back to the universal example, you can see that there are plenty of half densities with this property. And then uh, you can transform uh, half densities into function just by dividing by rho. So if you have a function f, you can define delta of the function by this formula. You just multiply the function with rho, you get a half density, you apply the canonical delta and divide by rho. Okay? So this is delta defined on function, but of course it depends on the choice of rho. And now uh, this uh, delta becomes a second order differential operator on function. But it's non canonical, depends on the choice of rho. Now, the, the application in uh, quantum field theory is to consider function f of this form, exponential of i over h bar s, where s is a function. And if you use the properties, the algebraic property of this delta, you can check that delta f equal to zero is equivalent to this equation. So here, by round bracket, I denote the, the uh, odd Poisson bracket defined by the odd symplectic structure, and this again delta, and notice now this contribution is of degree h bar. Now, uh, the whole point of, uh, well, the, the result of this assumption of this equation is that uh, you, in several cases, you can forget this term. I mean, actually, there are two cases when you can forget this term. Either because uh, you assume that delta s is equal to zero, so that term is not there, or because uh, you want to take the semi-classical limit, so you assume that h bar is very, very small, so the first approximation, that term is not there. And then you are left with this simpler equation, which is called the classical master equation. Now, an advantage of the classical master equation is that uh, it only uses uh, the Poisson bracket. And this makes sense also in infinite dimensional manifolds. So if you have manifolds uh, of functions, for example, of section, you can define a uh, symplectic structure with a well-defined Poisson bracket. I mean, the Poisson bracket is not defined on all possible functions, but for example, is well-defined on local functionals. So this equation makes sense. Whereas uh, this other part, the capital delta, does not make sense in the infinite dimensional setting. Remember, the geometric way I used to define it was via half densities. So half densities uh, require a notion uh, which is very close to the notion of integrations. And that's what you don't have typically on infinite dimensional manifolds. 
So the advantage is that classical master equation can be studied uh, uh, rigorously. And then if you really want to do quantum field theory, what you have to do is to, uh, to start with this, and then you choose some regularization to make sense of the rest. For example, you discretize the theory, or you do some other kind of regularization. Okay, now uh, let me just go back to the, to the grading. Uh, so remember now, I, for a moment, I just assume that the, the, the symplectic structure is odd, right? Uh, then uh, the point is that we have a cohomological vector field Q and a function S. And now for physical reason, uh, it's good to, to assume that uh, S is degree zero. This should correspond to the physical action. I mean, at least part of it should be the physical action. So now you want to introduce some Z degrees, some compatible Z degrees in such a way that this function S has degree zero. And on the other hand, it's convenient to have Q of degree plus one as a usual differential. So this force is omega to have degree minus one. So that's why we go back to the case of differential grade asymplectic manifold of degree minus one. So this is what we called BV before. Okay, so this is just the fix. Now, uh, I will skip this. Uh, so physicists are familiar with this description. In gauge theories, you can construct things explicitly this way, but I will not do it. Okay, now finally, let me come to the case of relaxed structures. So for application, uh, uh, it's important to relax the structure a little bit. So remember that uh, uh, we assume that S is a cohomological vector field of Q. And now I want to drop this assumption. So in the setting here, we have a close to form omega. I can also drop the assumption that is non-degenerate. Okay. And I also drop the assumption that uh, Q is a, uh, is a Hamiltonian vector field of S. So what I'm left is is the following. I have a close to form omega, a vector field, a cohomological vector field Q, and some function, right? And then I just introduce uh, this uh, one form alpha check to measure this error. If you take the differential of this form alpha check, you recover the lead derivative of omega with respect to Q. So these two form omega check measure the failure of omega to be invariant. Okay, so at this point, it seems that everything is lost, but there is something interesting. You can just do some very simple algebraic manipulation using Cartan calculus extended to supermanifold, and you can check the following thing. So the first thing is that, uh, well, of course, ob omega check is obviously closed, but you can also immediately check that it is Q invariant. Okay, so omega check now is Q invariant. And from this formula, you also see that its degree is n plus one, if omega is degree n. Now, what you can do now, this is almost the same as a, 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 graded, I mean, a differential graded symplectic manifold. The only problem is omega check might be degenerate. So, but now what you do is you just do the symplectic reduction. So let me assume that the reduction is, is moved. So by M underline, I denote the quotient of M by the kernel of omega check and assume that this is moved. Now on this quotient, there is a symplectic form. Right? There is a, a close to form whose pullback is, is omega check. It's automatically non-degenerate. It has degree n plus one. And the next thing you can check is that this Q is automatically projectable. So there is a uniquely defined vector field Q underlined on this quotient. It still commutes with itself. So it's again a cohomological vector field and it's still uh, compatible with the symplectic structure. So out of these relaxed data, so everything seems to be lost here, but out of these relax data in degree n, we construct a differential grade asymplectic manifold of degree n plus one. So this may be seen as some way of generating differential grade asymplectic structure in degree n plus one. And the typical situation when this appears is in field theory. So suppose that we that uh, the supermanifold m is now infinite dimensional, is a space of fields on some compact manifold sigma. So by space of fields, I mean, for example, function of sigma, sections on vector bundle of sigma, maps from sigma to some other manifolds, connection on sigma, I mean local objects, shift-shift-like objects. And suppose that we have a BF and minus one V structure on this uh, space of fields. So a symplectic structure of degree N minus one, a cohomological vector field Q, and uh, actually and a, a Hamiltonian function S for Q, such that S for some commute with itself, and assume that everything is local. So all these things are written in terms of integrals of fields and their derivatives. Now, since everything is local, so everything is written by some universal local things integrated over M, now integrated over sigma, now I can extend the definition also to the case when sigma is boundary. Just take the same expression. But now, I mean, the expression makes sense, but the relation between omega Q and sigma are spoiled, typically spoiled by boundary terms. So, um, 
So in particular, we now have, uh, so if we apply this, this, this construction to a manifold with boundary, we get a relaxed BFN minus V structure. By the previous construction, you get a BFN structure on some other space of fields. And you can check that uh, this uh, associated space of fields is some space of fields on the boundary of sigma. So this means that from a, from a, so we start from a, a local BFN minus 1V structure on compact manifold, uh, on closed manifold, actually. We extend it to manifold with boundary. And this, as a gift, provides us with a BFN V structure on the boundary. Okay? And this is some universal construction that is very useful. And so in particular, uh, you can just describe here two applications in the cases uh, n equal to minus 1 and n equal to 0. Uh, okay, maybe let me just say, um, so I think this is, yeah. So, so yeah? you get the structure or on manifold with boundary, yes. which is not not what? Not, not the correct one. Not the correct one. But on the boundary, there is a correct one. And in addition, there is still some interplay between the relaxed structure in the bulk and the correct so structure in the boundary. The one in the bulk. One of the bulk is relaxed. Yes. And the, and the one in the boundary is not. So the one in the boundary is uh, the true structure. And in addition, the, 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 the describes the, the, the errors in the bulk structure. OK. So. Um, Okay, so for example, uh, let's take the case uh, uh, n equal to zero. So we start with a BV, BFV structure on closed manifold. So this is what you need to describe reduced phase spaces. Now we extend the situation to manifold with boundary, and on the boundary you get a BF square V structure. So for example, a Poisson structure or a Poisson structure optomotopy. The other example is n equal to minus one. So uh, in the bulk, we have a BV structure on closed manifold. We extend it to uh, manifold with boundary. And uh, uh, on the boundary, you get a BFV structure, so a reduced phase space. So, so notice that this is an example of quantum field theory. So this tells you that on the boundary, you get something which is related to symplectic geometry. This is somehow the, the thing you should expect is uh, the Hamiltonian picture and that you want to, to quantize. And this is some other piece of information that is known in example, but actually here it turns out to be general. So maybe since I have just one minute, and this actually, let me go on. So well, one interesting thing is that this construction is, is a, also a nice property with respect to gluing of manifolds. But maybe let me just give you one interesting example. Take Chern-Simon theory uh, on the boundary. So here, what I want to do is a uh, Marcin Weinstein the, 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 um, the reduction for the following case. So I take a, a two-manifold sigma, I consider uh, connections A on, on this manifold. I take the T about symplectic structure, and I want to consider the space of flat connection, C. This is a quasotropic subspace. Uh, its reduction is just the same as a quotient by gauge transformation. You have uh, an equivariant momentum map, which is a curvature. Uh, the BFE action in the case of an equivariant momentum map has a, a, a term that does not depend on B and a term that is linear in B. You can write things here. And now you can extend this to the case of manifold with boundary and apply this reduction for a lack structure. And it turns out that on the boundary, uh, your coordinates are the connection A and uh, the, the other field C. So this is an even coordinate, and this is a coordinate of degree 1. And you have this Hamiltonian function here. So this should describe a Poisson structure. Notice I only have coordinate of degree 0 and plus 1. So this is a Poisson. So this is a, the, the standard case. This is a Poisson structure. And the Poisson structure is written here. And if you unravel this definition, it tells you that this is actually a Poisson structure that has two pieces. It has a constant piece, right, CDC, and the linear piece, CAC. So the linear piece is corresponding to the dual of a Lie algebra. And you can think this is just the Lie algebra of uh, one, uh, or, the, or the Lie algebra of uh, functions on sigma taking values in Lie algebra with a pointwise bracket. And the constant term just gives you a, a central extension. So this way, you recover the Katsmudi algebra. Its representation, you think of quantization. This tells you that uh, churn simons on uh, the find on, on the boundary, which has boundary itself, is, should be related to uh, representation of, of the algebra. So you recover usual vertex algebra. OK, maybe just let me skip this other example. Let me tell you that uh, uh, we develop a whole theory also for the other case, minus 1, uh, which gives you uh, uh, sim reduction, symplectic reduction on the boundary and the quantization. And uh, so we can really define the uh, hey Hilbert space for several theories and uh, uh, show how to quantize theorem manifold with boundary. And we 
uh, apply this example to, to several cases, uh, BF theory, non abelian BF theory, Chen Simon theory, Poisson sigma model, 2D and Mill theory. And maybe just maybe finish with the remark about 2D and Mill theory because Pavel Nyov could not be here. So this is a great result he had recently with his students. Uh, it showed that using this procedure, this you can use just purely perturbative computation to recover the whole non-perturbative 2D yam mill theory. But for this, you have really have to use the whole power of this construction, not only manifold with boundary, but manifold with corner, and understand how things, I mean, what is the interplay between all the things. Okay, and then I think I can go to the end. Thank you.